Okay, so I want to talk about non-orientable surfaces today. So I'm going to look at two classic arcade games and the worlds that they take place in. So firstly, Pac-Man's universe. In Pac-Man, um, you're bound to a small kind of rectangle, um, but there is a path. If Pac-Man goes off this side, he comes back in on that side. And similarly, if he goes off that side, then he comes back in on this side. So it's like the world is looped. And what we've got here, if you imagine this as a piece of paper, um, I've got one. So it's as a piece of paper, if we go off here, if we come back on here, we can imagine his world as a loop like that. So if you embedded the whole of the Pac-Man universe into this, he's just going round and round in circles. Asteroids is quite similar. So Asteroids is a game where you play as a little spaceship, which is a triangle, and you're shooting these asteroids that slowly break up. If you go off here, you come back on here. And if you go off the top, you come back here. And so we've, we've got the same thing as the Pac-Man universe, but a, um, another dimension that it's going through as well. And this one's, it requires more thinking about what shape universe that is. Um, so if I just fold this to make it slightly thinner, which will make it easier. Okay, so we start off with a rectangle. What we want is the top to go to the bottom. So we could do it like that. Until we've got a tube. But we also want that if you go off one side, you come onto the other. So if we twist the whole thing, get it like that, what we end up with is a donut shape, a torus. And um, that's the shape of the asteroid universe. You, you could embed the whole game onto this, and people have done this. Um, you, and you, you get the game modelled. But there are twists that you can do with these kind of things. So, one of the twists is what happens if, when taking this side, say this one here, what happens if you say you were one way up? So here's a Pac-Man going across. Da -da -da -da. He's going to go off the edge and he comes on the other way, but this time he's upside down. Um, we can model this with paper, and it's easiest done with a thin piece of paper. Uh, I've got a, a 10 pound note here that I've folded twice in this kind of direction. So instead of just forming a loop like that, what we can get is if we put in a half twist and join it up, then we get a kind of shape like this. It's called a Mobius band or a Mobius strip, um, but it's easy to model this kind of thing. And in fact, I've got a better Mobius strip in my classroom. This is one that I knitted um, out of string using some pencils as knitting needles. So the whole thing just doesn't go flat. Um, it's always got this half bend into it, and you can make maybe strips which have a, a higher uh, degree of bends in them as well. So that's a Mobius strip, and it's the first example that most people come across of something which uh, we we can't embed, we can't make it just go flat. Um, but there's an extension of it if we try and go in both directions with a, a twist. So if I just draw as a rectangle, what's going to happen? Imagine in a kind of asteroid universe if we want it to swap when we go off the top and swap when we go off the side. So what we want is that top side to go to the bottom side, but kind of reversed. And we want this side, the right hand side, to go to this side, but reversed. So we want a half twist in both directions. What sort of shape does that make if we start folding it up? And it's a shape that doesn't exist in our 3D world. Um, it's called a Klein bottle, and it, it, like if you try doing the half trace, you, you'll, you'll get to a kind of problem here. I'm going to draw you a picture of what a Klein bottle looks like. So, so um, this is a kind of uh, a view of it which almost exists in 3D. It briefly goes through itself. So, it's like a kind of classic bottle shape. Okay. 
So what we've got here is uh, a shape which goes up, round itself, and then it briefly goes through itself. It's got a little intersectional thing here, and then it opens up back to being itself at the bottom. Um, so if I just bring you slightly closer on that so you can see. So, da -da -da, that's the kind of bottle. So it goes up like a bottle shape, through itself, and then out at the bottom again. Um, now, if we were actually doing this one, if we actually had a true Klein bottle, then it wouldn't have to go through itself, it wouldn't have this self-intersection. Um, so it's, it's a shape that in 4D can exist just as is, uh, but in 3D we have this small self-intersection that wouldn't really exist. And I needed one. Um, so here's uh, my Klein bottle. So it's got the kind of classic uh, bottle shape at the, the bottom. Um, goes up around there and then it goes through itself so, so mm, black didn't really show up very well in this video I regret doing it in black but it has a, a small hole where it goes through itself and then opens up at the bottom so it's a shape where there is no inside and outside so to get inside the shape you go up through the middle you go around there and round into it but th there's no boundary um, doing this sort of thing. And people use them as um, like decanters or teapots or that kind of thing. But they're really hard to fill. Um, but that's it. Classic non-orientable surfaces.